Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back today to another video. It is the game preview ahead of Everton's Premier League fixture against West Ham United at Goodison Park tomorrow. New Year's Day, the first game of 2021 and let's hope we can start 2021 off in uh, the same fashion as that we ended 2020. Four straight Premier League wins, obviously, against Chelsea, Leicester, Arsenal and Sheffield United. will skate over the game against Manchester United in between. We don't have to talk about that. Um, and Everton are currently on a really, really good run of form in the Premier League. And Carlo Ancelotti's Everton would love to continue that going into the new year. Obviously, it's a new year. Let's hope that we can continue, like I said, putting in those performances that we have been doing, certainly in the Premier League, and getting those results. We're coming up against the tough West Ham side, the West Ham side that currently sit 10th in the Premier League, but we all know you know, the conversation, and that is that the Premier League this season is so, so tight. It's so close-knitted between the sides from, you know, 1st to 12th, really. There's only a matter of 9, 10 points or something like that. West Ham currently sitting 10th. However, they're only 3 points behind, uh, I think it's Chelsea in 5th. So, you know, they win this game tomorrow against Everton. They climb right up the table and all they need then is results to go their way. And, you know, they could be in and around the top 6 as well in the next couple of weeks or so. So, they sit 10th, 6 wins, 5 draws and five losses. A lot of those draws have come recently as well. I've had a lot of draws in recent weeks. So it's up to Everton ultimately to turn up and um get the three points again. We're probably going to have to perform a little bit better than we did last time out against Sheffield United. West Ham are a much better side than Sheffield United. They're much more organised, obviously managed by David Moyes, who we know oh so well. Um, and defensively, they don't leak anywhere near as, as many goals. And they're also going good, good, uh, you know, good going forward and can, um, can score as well and can create opportunities. So I do think Everton are going to have to step it up. Obviously, Everton are coming into this game uh, having had a few more days rest than what we originally had anticipated due to the game on Monday against Manchester City being postponed. Everton now come into it with nearly a week's rest, which at this period in the in the year and um you know during the December period to have a week's rest or nearly a week's rest between games is absolutely massive. Obviously we were due to play Manchester City just 48 hours after we played Sheffield United and that would have left us with what two or three days rest before going into this game against West Ham. West Ham actually did play a midweek game as well. Uh, I think they played on Wednesday so obviously we'll have had a lot more rest than the West Ham players as well. So there's no excuse for Everton to not turn up and be at it 110%. There's no excuse for tired legs. There's no excuse for players being you know, like I said, a little bit fatigued because they've had near enough a week's rest in what's a, a really busy period and a couple of more days rest than those players that they'll be playing against. Carlo Ancelotti had his press uh, conference, pre-game press conference ahead of this game yesterday. He gave us a little bit of an injury update on a number of players. He spoke about Richarlison and said Richarlison is available for this game. He has come back, obviously, after sustaining a concussion in the quarter-final against Manchester United uh, about a week or so ago. Richarlison did confirm on social media directly after that game that he was okay, but there's these new laws in place for Premier League sides that when a player does suffer a concussion, they have to spend a certain amount of time off the pitch and, and out of football, you know, just in case anything reoccurs. But that time period is over now and Richarlison is back and in contention of playing tomorrow. He also gave an update on James Rodriguez. Unfortunately, it's not the same for him. He will again miss this game through an injury. Uh, we did speak about this earlier on in the week. I think we spoke about it in yesterday's live stream. Um, you know, ultimately, Carlo Ancelotti has come out and said the same thing as that he's pretty much said for the last couple of weeks, and that's that, you know, we'll monitor Hammers day by day. It's a situation that we just have to keep our eye on, uh, and we're hopeful that he'll be fit for the you know the next game, which of course is Rotherham in the FA Cup on the 9th of January. If Hammers isn't available for the Rotherham game, then I think maybe we need a little bit more of an explanation as to the injury because Carlo did say you know a week or so ago that it was just a slight injury and he should be okay and he should run it off maybe James Rodriguez is, is just having a little bit of time to rest now maybe Carlo said look we're playing well we don't necessarily need to throw you in so we'll wait until you're absolutely 100% and then we'll put you back in to the team but unfortunately he won't be available for tomorrow's game Carlo also gave an injury update on Alan and uh, Luca Dean and said that both of those players could be looking at a January return Luca Dean firstly and then Alan maybe a little bit later Luca Dean is back in individual training at USM Finch Farm he's been pictured there today which is fantastic news but of course both of those will be unavailable for the game tomorrow so 
Again, going in here with a, a pretty much a full strength squad, obviously minus the players that we already knew were going to be out. Richarlison coming back is, is, is a massive boost, of course, especially creative-wise for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. We know Dom struggled over the last couple of games or so. And when you take Richarlison out of that team, and you know, I know Alex Awobi's been playing really, really well recently, and Bernard come in you know, uh, against Sheffield United off the bench and was absolutely fantastic. Obviously, Richarlison has been there for the, you know, a, a couple of games. He only missed the game against Sheffield United. Um, but, you know, when you take somebody like Richarlison out, you really do, you know, lack that little bit of creativity that he brings. And that ultimately, Richarlison is the type of player that can turn something into nothing. He can win you the game when it looks like you're not going to win a game of football. And that was what we missed against Sheffield United. And you could see that in the game. But obviously, fortunately for us, Gilfie Sigurdsson popped up with a really, really important goal in the 80th minute. So it's massive news that Richarlison is back in the team. And hopefully that'll help players like Dominic Calvert-Lewin around him to, you know, get back on the score sheet and um, get out of this sort of mini goal gold drought that he's currently suffering from. I don't want to say it's a gold drought because he's only gone a couple of games and he's so, so important. It's not like he's been putting in five, sixes out of tens, even though he's not scoring goals. He's still putting in nine out of ten performances in terms of creating and making a nuisance of himself and getting around the pitch. But again, like I said, coming up against West Ham, this game was originally supposed to have 2,000 fans at Goodison Park. Unfortunately, that is not the case now after the announcement that Liverpool City region will be moving into Tier 3 restrictions, which of course means that we are are not permitted to have any fans at Goodison Park. That's the last two Everton games now where fans have been pulled out the ballot and received the ticket for the game and been excited to go and both times they have been unable to go firstly because of the postponement of the City game and this one because of the change in restrictions. So very unfortunate for those fans that were pulled out the hat. It is very good because I know how excited they would have been to go. Uh, but ultimately Everton have to turn up tomorrow. Everton have to turn up and Everton have to go out and get the three points. Like I said we're coming up against a very resilient uh, West Ham side, the West Ham side that, you know, are steady, you know, ultimately you look at the last few results, they do 2 all with Brighton, um, and then they do 0-0 with, with, with Southampton in the last game, which is actually a really, really good um, result, Southampton again in a team that are scoring constantly and, and are in very, very good form this season, so a couple of draws in the last couple of games, they were beaten by Chelsea before that, 3-0, drew with Palace one all. and the last game they won was on the 11th of December against Leeds United away from home, which again, you know, was a, it was a tough game, we've seen that ourselves a couple of weeks ago when we played Leeds um, away from home so they're starting to sort of steady themselves out like I said a couple of draws in the last couple of games more noticeably the last one against Southampton and the one prior to that against Brighton and um, again it, they're a decent side, West Ham. They're a very steady side. Look, we know from 10, 11 years of, of David Moyes being our manager what he brings. He's not necessarily going to bring the most amazing football, but the players will work hard for him. The players will fight for him. The players will give it all. The players will give it 110%. They'll leave everything on that pitch. And I remember at the start of the season when Everton played West Ham in the Carabao Cup, um, Prior, just prior to the Manchester United game uh, in the Carabao Cup, we beat them 4-1 and it was a period in the season where they were doing, you know, they weren't doing so well in the Premier League, they were sort of down the bottom end of the league and a lot of their fans were questioning David Moyes and the appointment of David Moyes and does he really improve sides defensively and look at how much that's changed now you speak to any West Ham fan now and they'll fancy themselves going into the model they'll talk about how, you know, they looked at a, a period of fixtures during November and December and thought, where are we going to get points from, where are we going to pick up our next win but they got results, they're grinding results out, they're picking up points, they're scoring goals. They've got players like Suchek, who I've been really impressed with this season, looks a really top player. Obviously, Yarmolenko, who we know so well. Sebastian Hall has popped up as well with a couple of goals. A worldie against Crystal Palace over there. Kick Robert Snodgrass, who scored in that Carabao Cup fixture I've just spoke about before. Um, Jared Bowen, who's, who's a presence going forward. You know, Pacey gets at you, to, stretches the defender. So Everton are going to have to be on, you know, at a under. 110% tomorrow because this David Moyes' West Ham side will be at 110%. They'll fight, they'll dig deep, they'll work hard. That's why they've been grinding out results. That's why they've been picking up points even in games that, you know, are, are difficult to pick up points. And like I said, very steady record. Six wins, six draws. Um, but, uh, but Sorry, six wins five draws with five losses as well. And we need to go out and show our quality tomorrow. Like I said, we've got the likes of... Um, 
uh, Richarlison back in the team. Dominic Calvert-Lewin should start, I assume. Gilfie Sigurdsson will probably start again after scoring against uh, Sheffield United. He'll be full of confidence. Tom Davis will be full of confidence. I assume Carlo will go with the same back line as that's been working, unless he maybe brings in Seamus Coleman. We'll go through my predicted starting eleven in just a moment. But it's, it's vitally important that we start this year off right, uh, or next year off right, should I say, because again, like I said, you know we've been in a good run of form in the Premier League. Four wins out of the last four, beating some tough sides in some tough games as well, and games where we've had to be, you know, resilient and we've had to be organised and we've had to be steady and we've had to give it hundred and ten percent and we've had to dig deep and fight hard against sides like Leicester and Chelsea and even Arsenal who come to Goodison Park and were just so desperate to get anything out of the game and we had to dig deep to go and get the three points. Sheffield United were so desperate not to lose and we had to dig deep. This might be a little bit more of an open game because West Ham aren't, you know, really desperate to. Um, well, uh, they are desperate to win the game per se because you're desperate to win any game, but they're not in the desperate situation as much as Sheffield United are. But having said that, we're going to need to play a lot better than we did against Sheffield United because, again, you know they had a couple of opportunities that the quality just wasn't there, and ultimately that's why the you know towards the bottom end of the table or, or rock bottom at the moment, and I've only picked up two points. West Ham have got those little bits of quality going forward. They've got those players that can change it and and, and that can put the ball in the back of the net, and ultimately, um, you know we have to avoid them doing that, and we have to. Go up the other end and create you know as many chances as well look at the style in which we um adopted against West Ham in the Carabao Cup fixture early on in the season it was during that period where we'd beaten Tottenham we'd beaten West Brom we'd beaten I think Fleetwood 5-2 we'd beaten Salford 3-0 we'd beaten Brighton 4-2 and we were scoring goals for fun and we come up against West Ham and I think we won that game 4-1 or 4-2 and we were just constantly scoring for fun Dominic Calvert-Lewin scored at Attic it's a different style of Everton that we're seeing now I don't want to say it's a completely different um you know tactics or style of play because Carlo alluded that it was you know it was the same it was just a different way of going out and getting results practically but that's what it is it's a different way of going out and getting results we're not really hitting teams for three four now in the same vein as that we're not really conceding one or two a game on average we're you know out of the last four Premier League games we've kept three clean sheets and we've only conceded one goal and it was through a penalty no goals conceded through open play so we can keep that solid structured defensive back line tomorrow and we can completely nullify any opportunity that West Ham have. I do believe we'll be able to hit them and we'll have a lot of quality going forward and, and, and too much ultimately for them to handle. But we want to go out and we want to get the win. We want to make it five out of five. We want to climb closer to the top of the Premier League title. I know Carlo's come out and said, look, we're not challengers and we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. But ultimately, we're four points off the top now with a game in hand against Manchester City. And you might say, oh, that's not a game in hand because it's against Manchester City. But it is a game in hand. It's at Goodison Park. We play Manchester City towards the back end of the season, you know, potentially when fans are allowed back into the ground um, and you know we're a couple of points off the top of the table or top four or whatever we'll turn up in that game so we've got a game in hand and we're four points from the top of the league so if we go out and get the three points tomorrow then it leaves us in a very 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 good position and it starts the new year off perfectly we don't notoriously do well on new year's day we don't i remember a couple of seasons ago we lost to leicester one nil in, in what was an awful game and, and we just basically allowed jamie vardy to um run behind us and, and score which is absolutely skilled when you're playing leicester um i think we lost to city last year on New Year's Day, but again, <clears throat> was a disappointing result, but we were coming up against a very, very strong Manchester City side, so it'd be nice for Everton to turn up on New Year's Day and just win a game of football for once, um, and again... <clears throat> Like I said, David Moyes will make this as hard as possibly can for Everton. He'll make sure that those West Ham players are structured, that they've got a plan, a game plan, and that ultimately they dig deep and they fight and they, they make it as physical as they can. But one thing that we can take a lot of confidence from is that the Everton performances we've been seeing in recent weeks are matching that. You know, we're seeing a lot of fight, we're seeing a lot of passion, we're seeing, you know, players digging deep, players getting involved. So, you know, it, ultimately for me, I think we should be winning this game and that should be the aim. It's not going to be easy, but ultimately if we want to be, again, targeting for European positions, forget the league because it is all a big stretch and, you know, we're all living in this bubble again at the moment where we're so close to the top of the league that I think we do get sort of lost in where we actually are as a football club and, you know, the improvements that we need to make before we can seriously challenge. Um, but let's think about Europe and finishing in a Europe. European position for, for a minute if we want to be finishing any European position we simply have to be beating those teams that are just below us and we have to be competing with those teams that are in and around us and West Ham whilst we're fourth in the Premier League 
league with a, a chance to go one point off the top and West Ham are 10th. West Ham are only three points behind fifth. West Ham go on a two-game win streak and they're right back up there and people could say they're fighting for the European competitions as well. So it's not like you can't just look at the table this year and go, oh, they're in 10th. You know, that'll be an easy game because it's not like that whatsoever. It's so, so tight. Uh, anyway, let's get into my predicted starting 11 for this game then. Uh, I think it's really, really interesting. Obviously, going uh, from Carlo Ancelotti's pre-game press conference, he confirmed that James Rodriguez is still out for this game. Richarlison is available. We've had no other injury news uh, other than the ones that we already know. We know Alan's not available. We know Luca Dean's not available. We know jean philippe Abamon's not available, or we assume he is. He didn't get mentioned, um, but we assume he's not available. So anyway, let's get straight in to the predictions then. Jordan Pickford. In goal for me again. Started against Sheffield United. Didn't really have a massive amount to do. To be perfectly honest with you. There was one situation towards the end of the half. Where. Sorry just take a sip of my tea. Where he, um, they flashed the ball across the goal line. And I actually think he gets a, a touch to it. Um, ends up going out. And the referee blows off for half time. It probably would have been a corner. But other than that he didn't have an awful lot to do. Did he? Let's be honest. He was coming up against the side. Who were struggling to score goals this season. Recently have scored more than they were doing. But still. Struggling to create many opportunities. Only picked up two points in the Premier League. So, um, he didn't really have a massive, massive amount to do. But Jordan starts in goal for me tomorrow. I've gone with the same back line. Exactly the same back line. No need to change it again. Four wins out of four in the Premier League. Um, you know, fantastic performances against Chelsea, Leicester. Even defensively against Sheffield United, we were quite strong. Arsenal, we were quite strong defensively as well, other than that penalty. So, I've gone with Ben Godfrey at left back. Again... For me, whilst Luca Dean's still unavailable and still working his fitness up and, and you know, basically still isn't ready to, to get back into the team, Ben Godfrey starts at left back. Absolutely amazing. Once again, really solid performance against Sheffield United. Didn't have a massive amount to do. Went on a fantastic run at one point in the game where he just absolutely bulldozed from one side of the pitch to the other and got fouled, won a foul. He actually got back up after being fouled and tried to carry on, but the referee had already blown his whistle. Um, so Ben Godfrey starts at left back again. Not a bad way to say about the lad in recent weeks and he's going to have a tough test tomorrow he really really is West Ham have got some tricky wingers they've got some good players going forward like I mentioned before we know Yarmolenko oh so well and I understand that it was what four or five years ago that he turned up for um it was a Kiev and done what he done in the Europa League but he's still got that quality uh in his locker so it's going to be a tough test for, for Ben Godfrey but I, you know nothing that I don't think he should he should struggle with so he starts at left back centre halves have gone for Yeri Meenan and Michael Keane uh this may have been a different selection had we have played on Monday against Manchester the City, I might have been sitting here saying maybe Mason drops to centre half and Michael Keane comes out with Coleman at right back because obviously of fitness wise and stuff like that we see Michael Keane come off against Sheffield United which we can only assume was to give him a little bit of a rest ahead of uh, the game against Manchester City but of course that game didn't happen so everybody's had three or four more days rest, six days overall um, so for me you know, there's no reason as to why we wouldn't put our strongest side out and our strongest centre back pair at the moment is Yeri Meenan and Michael Keane again very very solid in recent weeks in the Premier League didn't have a massive amount to do against Sheffield United like we mentioned but very very solid uh, overall and no need to change it and right back is Mason Holgate again there's there's no place for Seamus Coleman in the starting 11 and you might say well you know Seamus needs to come back in at some point and you know you, I, I, I'm probably being a little bit of a hypocrite because I said four or five weeks ago when <clears throat> we spoke about strength and depth in the in the team and in the club I said I want Mason Holgate to be playing right back I don't really want uh, sorry since half I don't really want Mason Holgate to be playing right back because that's not where we're trying to develop him as a player but Again, I've said it multiple times before, football is a sport where fans will constantly go against themselves and constantly, you know, show themselves as hypocrites because one minute you've got an opinion and the next minute your opinion completely changes and man ultimately has completely changed with this situation. Mason Hargate should continue at right back. There's no need to change a back line that's working so well. Um, okay, maybe you could say, well, squad rotation and fitness, fine, that'd be acceptable and if we'd have gone into the Manchester City game with a little bit of a different back four, I'd have said, you know what, that's fair enough, it's squad rotation, I understand it but like I said the players have had six days to rest now and, and six days since the last Premier League game so there's absolutely no need to change that back line and, and Mason slots back in at right back for me uh, because he's been absolutely fantastic very solid yes he doesn't get forward as much as uh, Seamus Coleman does but defensively he's very 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 solid and if we want to keep a, a defensive organised back line which we're going to have to do tomorrow um, then for me you, you stick with Mason Holgate and you stick with that same back line so there you go going into the midfield then I've gone with the same three 
midfielders who started the game against Sheffield United, Adelaide the Corre, uh, Tom Davis and Gilfie Sigurdsson. The Corre very solid again, um, brilliant getting you know getting to every ball, chasing every ball down, making a nuisance of himself, tiring out opposition players constantly. Tom Davis I thought was fantastic fantastic gets a lot of stick Tom Davis gets an absolute awful amount of stick not only is he a brilliant human being by the way and I will mention this and you might say that's got nothing to do with his football and ability it hasn't but he's just dead sound Tom Davis was out yesterday helping provide um you know clothes and, and food for 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 the homeless during this you know really really tough period of time when you know at the moment you go out your door and it's about minus three degrees it's freezing cold outside I can't even begin to imagine what it's like to not have a roof over your head it must be absolutely dreadful and Tom Davis went out as part of a group of people and a massive well done to, to everybody else that was involved as well not just Tom massive well done to everybody else that was involved you know you've got my utmost respect and, and you are the, the the best level of human being on this planet and Tom Davis was one of them he wasn't in a club tracky there was no cameras there was nothing made about it he didn't post it all over social media he just went out to help people and that just shows the type of lad that is he is yes we can criticize his football and ability yes we can say you know we, he needs to improve on this he needs to improve on that but you can't criticize him as a human being he's an absolutely brilliant human being and going back to his football and ability which is ultimately why he's in this starting 11 Tom Davis was brilliant against Sheffield United absolutely brilliant and I won't sit here and stand for any stick that he received in that game I think he made something like 20 ball recoveries or something like that he had an 88% pass completion rate it was a masterclass it was his best performance in an Everton shirt and I said it yesterday during the live stream you can sit there and you can say all you like oh yeah but he was playing a really poor Sheffield United team and he was playing a team that you know hadn't won a game all season Tom Davis wasn't going to go home on Saturday night put his feet up and went I had a decent game today there but we were playing against the shit opposition he's going to go home and go you know what I had a really good game there today the manager told me I've had a good game I feel good about myself he's going to bring that confidence into the games against tougher opposition again West Ham tomorrow is a step up Tom Stark which he absolutely should absolutely should because he was brilliant let's see what he can do against the step up of an opposition if he can put in another good performance and show that his confidence is flowing through him in the same way as Alex Awolby's is in the same way as Gilfie Sigurdsson's is then he'll put those performances in against anybody because he's a confidence player like most footballers um, and he was absolutely brilliant against Sheffield United and, and he deserves a start again tomorrow he absolutely does so Tom Davis next to him and then Gilfie Sigurdsson obviously popping up with the winner um, you know uh, against Sheffield United really really good goal didn't have a great game to be fair wasn't massively involved in it but ultimately it's about moments and with players like Gilfie Sigurdsson it's about moments and we've cried out for Gilfie Sigurdsson to do this for a long 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 time Is his, was his performance good enough on Saturday probably not he probably should have done better he probably should have been a little bit more involved but ultimately we are, we've all sat back all week and gone we've won four you know four uh, Premier League games out of four in recent weeks we're flying at the top of the table Gilfie Sigurdsson's come out with a moment in the last 10 minutes where he's won us that game of football and that doesn't excuse poor performances but what it does is it makes us go we need more of that we need more of those moments we need players who maybe not aren't necessarily having a great game to pop up and score you a winner and ultimately that's that'll be the difference between teams and not just Everton and again I'm not saying Everton are fighting for the league or they're going to win the league or whatever but that's the difference between sides that win the league and sides that fall short of European football is having those players that can pop up with those moments and provide those moments where you're not necessarily playing well you're struggling you're having a tough time of it but within the last five, ten minutes of the game, you score the winner and you go out and you get the three points. Because ultimately then the performance doesn't really mean anything. If you beat a side 9-0, you get three points. If you beat a side 1-0 in the last second, you get three points. And yes, it means your goal difference and this, that and the other. But when does it ever really come down to goal difference? Not really. Look at Manchester United the other day. Wolves kept them really, really solid. Looked like it was going to go for a door. Marcus Rashford comes out in the last 20 seconds, scores the winner. They ultimately win that game and they go within touch and distance of top of the league. And their fans are full of confidence and their players are full of confidence. Gilfie popped up with that moment and again... I think he starts tomorrow. I do. And then the front three then I've gone for Richarlison on the left, Dominic Calvert Lewin on the uh, in the centre, sorry, and Bernard. Uh, not Bernard, sorry, Alex Awobi on the right. I do feel a little bit for Bernard, to be honest, because I think he was brilliant uh, when he came on against Sheffield United. I really, really do think he was brilliant. And it, had we have played that game on Monday against Manchester City, I think Bernard's in the starting eleven all day long, all day long, because we knew Richarlison wasn't able to play. We knew Richarlison was still injured. So Bernard had been in that starting eleven, But... Ultimately, we didn't play that game against Manchester City and it just so happens that for the game tomorrow, Richarlison's back and listen, as well as Bernard 
played when he come off the bench. I think it's it's, it's very, um, you know, it's motivating. And for me, Carlo Ancelotti should be looking to Bernard tomorrow as the first player to come on if we need somebody to change the game or we need somebody to add that little bit of pace and add that little bit of energy. energy. And his message to Bernard should be, look, I was really impressed with that performance off the bench. You were brilliant. But the last couple of performances off the bench haven't been good enough. So I'm going to bring it on on the 60, 70th minute tomorrow. Go and do what you've done against Sheffield United last week. And then within, you know, a week or so, the next couple of games, you'll be playing. Let's be honest, they'll probably play against Rotherham. So if he, if he puts in another really good performance off the bench tomorrow, then puts in a decent performance in the cup against Rotherham, we then play Leicester, you know, a, a week after that. He may be in contention of starting, but we need that consistency from Bernard. And that's always been his issue, is... One week he can put in an absolutely brilliant performance and the next week he can he can look like he's not even on the pitch. He can look like you're playing with 10 men. We need that consistency that we've seen last week. And like I said, ultimately, it is a little bit unfortunate for him because if, if he would have played the City game, he'd have had this chance to start. But listen, Richarlison's back and Richarlison is just one of those players, similarly to James Rodriguez, probably similarly with Luka Dean when they're fit, they play. Richarlison is far too important to this Everton team to not play and it, it's good that we're you know, obviously that record of not winning a game without without him in the team is, is being smashed now and we're not as reliant on him, but he's still a very, very good player and if he's fit to play, then he plays. So Richarlison starts on the left, uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin in the centre, obviously no arguments about that, don't really need to talk about that, hopefully he can pop up and like I said, end this little mini gold route. And then Alex Iwobi on the right, who's been absolutely fantastic recently, again, player like I mentioned with Tom Davis, playing with confidence, getting out there, getting down the wing, throwing balls into the box, creating chances um, and also ultimately using his body, using his strength, using his pace and um, you know putting in good performance after good performance so I think Alex Iwobi keeps his place as well. So there you go, that's my predicted starting eleven. as strong as can go really for Carlo Ancelotti given the injuries that we've got and the players that we've got out. No need to change the defensive back line around at all and um, like I said midfield played really really well with Davis, Decore and, and Sigurdsson in there and the forward line is, is the forward line and it has been that for quite some time and, and I think that's the team that we should be looking to um start with obviously Anthony Gordon started against Sheffield United I dare say he'll be on the bench and again maybe get his opportunity off the bench it was a it was a tough performance for him last time out it was he worked very very hard and he gave it 110% but it was always going to be tough for him being thrown in in that manner but there you go that is my predicted start in 11 look it's going to be a difficult game tomorrow it is but ultimately we have to go out there and we have to get the three points it's going to be hard we'll have to dig deep David Moyes knows how to organise his sides we know how David Moyes organises his sides we watched it week in week out for over a decade um, but we have to start the year off right if we can start the year off right we can go 5 out of 5 in the Premier League and within touch, touching distance at the top then the confidence the momentum will just be oozing take us nicely into the cup game against Rotherham and then take us into a, a you know a tough game ultimately against Leicester I think it is um, I believe it's Leicester we've only just played Leicester in the league though so that, that confuses me a little bit but I do believe it's Leicester but like I said you know ultimately we, we have to be able to go out and win these games of football tomorrow against Sad that are you know Doing okay in the league at the moment, still putting in our Wolves. It is we play Wolves on the Tuesday, um, Tuesday the twelfth, and then we play uh, Villa on the sixteenth. We play Leicester on the twenty seventh, which is our next home game. So Wolves, um, being the next Premier League game after tomorrow, um. Like I said, you know, we've been putting in really, really good performances and we have to keep that momentum up. It's going to be a difficult game tomorrow. We do have to step it up a level from the game against Sheffield United because that wasn't brilliant, let's be honest. We got the winner and ultimately that's all that matters, but we'll need to step it up a little bit more and hopefully the inclusion of Richarlison will help us step it up. But there you go. That is my game preview ahead of tomorrow's New Year's Day fixture against West Ham United. Please, please do let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit that like button. Look, it's New Year's Eve tonight absolutely enjoy yourself wishing everybody a very very happy new year uh, to you and your families once again a massive massive thank you for all of the support over the last year on the channel it is so 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 appreciated and i can't thank you enough 2020 has been a poor year on many of um you know reasons for many a reasons but it's been you know quite a good year for the channel and in terms of growing the channel and the consistency and stuff and the support from you lot has been massively massively appreciated at a time when you could have went nah there's no footy on don't want to wear it let's move on you stayed you watched you supported you got involved you liked you subscribed you shared so a big big thank you to everybody throughout the year have a fantastic night tonight stay safe look after yourselves 
Um, and yeah, a very, very, very happy new year to all of you and your families. Uh, big, big 2021 coming for Everton Football Club. We done a live stream yesterday talking about how Carlo Ancelotti has improved Everton during 2020. So please do check that out if you haven't already. Massive year ahead for the club. And let's hope it starts with a big three points tomorrow. Big thanks for watching. Please do leave a like if you have enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And we'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues.